Amen. I'm reading to, oh, I got to dismiss the uh, Sunday school classes. I know there's two, but we're going to dismiss you anyway. Amen. But I'm reading today from verse number 35 of Mark chapter number 4. Amen. Mark chapter 4 and verse number 35. Amen. I have come to praise the Lord. I've seen God do too many things in, uh, in our lives. Amen. To not praise Him. Amen. And, and, uh, and of course, the challenge is, if these be still, amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. I'll, I'll, if, Jesus said, if these be still, the very stones would immediately cry out, amen, in the triumphal entry. And, uh, and I don't want any stone taking my place. I want to be the one that praises the name of the Lord. Mark chapter 5 and verse number 35. And the same day when the even was come, he saith to them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. He was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He arose and rebuked the sea, and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And when they were come over to the other side of the sea, chapter 5 and verse 1, amen. And when they were come over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes, when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains because he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. He asked him, What is thy name? He answered, My name is Legion, for we are many. In verse number uh, 13, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. Unclean spirits went out, entered into the swine. In verse number uh, in verse number 15, and they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, had the legion, sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Amen. And they, and they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had, had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Amen. And so, uh, and, and then I'd like to jump over just a little bit. Uh, drop down to verse number 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands upon her that she may be healed, that she, and she shall live. Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, suffered many things, at the hand of, uh, uh, suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press 
and said, Who touched my clothes? Amen. In verse number 33, the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had done, it was done to her and her, came and fell before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest the master any more? Or any further. And uh, in verse number 41, he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her to Lithakumai, that it which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Straightway the damsel arose and walked. She was of the age of 12 years, of 12 years and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. I pray, O oh God, that as the anointing is upon your word, that somehow that we would be able to speak what you have given. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, that you would touch us and help us to be used of you even this night. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. Amen. I know the Lord has spoken to me. I don't know how long that the message will be, but I know that the Lord has spoken to me for tonight. I would like to speak on the next few minutes on interrupting a miracle. Interrupting a miracle. Amen. I... I intentionally read in chapter 4 at the beginning of, the, uh, of, that, of our reading first because I really believe that whenever Jesus said, let's pass over to the other side, the whole purpose of Jesus passing over to the other side is because he knew that the man of Gadara was there. I really believe that he was uh, with intention uh, heading to the other side to take care of the, of the need that was there. I, I know that he knew that there would be a storm that was coming that he didn't let his disciples in on. Otherwise, they wouldn't have got the boat out. Amen. If, he, if they'd have had weather, uh, the weather channel like we do today, uh, they would have said, uh, Master, I know that it's a long way around, but perhaps we ought to walk tonight. And uh, instead, or maybe we could do it another day. Because I hear that there is one more bad storm that's on the horizon. It's getting ready to kick up on this Sea of Galilee. And we're getting ready to see something we ain't never seen before. But I believe it was with intention that Jesus headed to, was heading to this place called Decapolis. Or on the other side into the place where, where this man of Gadara was. I believe that he saw the need that the man had. I believe that he knew uh, that he knew about him before he ever laid eyes on him. And, uh, and it was with direction that the boat was, was we're going to pass to the other side. The other side was, was, uh, was how, how wide in its, in, its, in its expanse. And coincidence to get to the other side and to the location of the man, no, I don't believe that it was a coincidence. But I believe it was with divine, amen, with a divine direction that that boat was being led. And, and Jesus said, we're going to the other side and we're going to go right over and he could point in that direction. What he knew, amen, and what they did not know was that that man was in, desperate, was in a desperate circumstance. He didn't know, amen, he, he didn't know what to do. The man didn't. He was so desperate. It, uh, it, was a, uh, it was a time whenever everything that could go wrong in that man's life had gone wrong. He was tormented by a legion of devils. Amen. You know, we've had a bad day or two in our life. And boy, whenever that bad day comes, we say, I can't wait until tomorrow. It's going to be better. But can you imagine whenever you get home at night and there is no home? Amen. And the only place that you have for a home is among the tombs. 
The only thing that you have to live for is among the mountains. And the only thing that you can do whenever you say, I wish for the morning, and in the morning you wish for the night. And whenever the night comes, you're wishing for the morning. Something to break this, something to break this condition that I'm in. I'm so tormented by the devils. I wish that I could be freed from whatever is in my life. Amen. I, I know that it talks about, amen, the ability that man could not do for him. They tried to bind him with chains, and he could not be bound. They tried to put fetters upon him, and they were broken. And, uh, and Jesus' intention on going to the other side, amen, his main intention on getting into that boat was to get to the other side. Amen. It was to create and, and involve a miracle. It was to display his power and his greatness in ways that they perhaps had not up to that time seen demonstrated in that certain way. The disciples had followed him loyally for some time, and so, so they were used to his uh, used to some of his asking or telling them, this is where we're going next. It was, it was an instruction book that they were filling out the blanks as they went, trusting him and depending on, upon him for their direction. And, uh, and so this night would be no different from any other. It's late in the evening, and, and while the crowd is away, while everyone is sleeping, I'm going to be going to the other side. It seems in the time that I have, uh, that I, in my growing up years, and in, in the time that I have been around lakes and rivers and this kind of thing, that normally the wind can blow, amen, most of the day, and something happens toward the evening. I don't know what causes it, but suddenly that wind that has been so violent Many times in the evening, uh, that wind will die down, and, uh, and by the evening, it, become, it begins to be calm. And, uh, and by, by morning, when, you, when we've got onto the lake early in the morning, it may have been windy the day before, and it may be windy uh, throughout the day, but if I can get on the, on the water, early enough, I know that there will be a calm. It's a calm time. And perhaps the disciples may have thought as they looked at the sea, amen, of Galilee, I know that uh, it looks a little bit choppy right now. The waves aren't that bad. But in their mind, they the, knew the law the, of nature that was getting ready to take place, or so they thought. It's, it's choppy right now, and the later it gets into the evening, the calmer it's going to be, the more peaceful that it's going to be, and we won't have to worry, amen, about anything. We're going to have a nice night, amen. Perhaps, uh, you know, it was a clear night and uh, no, uh, no sign of any clouds, nothing that would block the, or obscure the view and it was going to be a night that would be peaceful. It would have been a nice, uh, a, a nice night for the disciples to reflect about some of the places they had been in the past. Amen. For they had lived their life on that sea. And, uh, and they had fished throughout the night. It was a precious memory or, or a memory that they could hold on to as they began to paddle their way across Amen. Setting sail, perhaps, and, and moving the oars slightly just to keep that boat moving in the right direction. When suddenly, in the midst, on the way to a miracle, something happened. It was an er interruption. It was, it was a divine interruption, and yet it was an interruption. It was not out of the plan of God, this storm. It was, not out of the, it was not out of the things that God knew what was going to or what was not going to happen. Amen. It was in the midst of that interruption, amen, that God was going to show them 
on the other side of this sea, on the other side of this storm, there's another man, or there is a man that's going through the greatest storm in his life. And I want you to understand, before we ever get to him, I can handle any storm that comes my way. It doesn't matter how much wind. It doesn't matter how heavy the waves are. It may seem like the boat will capsize at the next, uh, at the next juncture. But I'm confident of this one thing. I can make it through and will make it through this storm because there's a man that I need to minister to. Amen. It may seem like the storm Amen. Is getting the upper hand. It may seem like we'll never make it through. Amen. But God, hallelujah, amen, said we're leaving here and we're going to minister there. And it doesn't matter what happens between here and there, but I have a goal in mind. I have someone that I want to touch in mind and I'm willing to go through an interruption or two just to show you my my power and just to demonstrate that I still care about individuals. It's amazing that he would lead the, leave the crowd behind. Amen. That had listened to his parables and then they had and then they had gone away and he had left them for one man. Amen. It's interesting to me because I know that if there was no one else, there was the day whenever it seemed like. I was the only one on the other shore. Hallelujah. And God began to reach to me. There was the, there was the service that, amen, that God began to touch your life. Amen. Every one of us knows that it seemed like, amen, the night that you first came to God, that night was intended just for you. Amen. Can I tell you? Yes, that's the way that it is. And there have been some interruptions, amen, that would have tried to keep you from that moment when you would come in contact with Jesus. But nothing can keep you from the hand of God oh hallelujah it doesn't matter what interruptions would would come our way amen there is a God that it with intent will come our way and will and will touch us in ways that we would never be able to uh, even begin to comprehend hallelujah have you ever been on your way to a miracle have you ever been on your way to a place where you knew that God was going to touch that this that this service was going to be the service that you were going to get your blessing, that this time was going to be your time. Have been going to a camp meeting perhaps, or a men, a men's conference, a ladies, a ladies retreat, or whatever that the case might be, and, uh, and you just needed something special from God. And has there ever been a storm that showed up? You can, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, speaking of, uh, speaking of men's conference, we got one coming up. Uh, here in the here in the next month, the third week of of April, and and I'm looking forward to going, and uh, and I'm really anxious for that uh, to hear the preaching and to and to listen to the teaching on that uh, on that Friday night and Saturday morning. But I can tell you that if I if I let it, there will be a lot of things that'll get in my way. I'm not talking about a wind and a rainstorm that would come up, but I'm confident that there could be all kinds of things that would step in, that would step in my way and, and rob me of the blessing of reaching out and being able to be touched on that night. And it was that way for, for the disciples. They were on their way when all of a sudden the storm came up. Maybe, maybe you've never had that trial in your life where everything is everything's been going smooth and it looked like well for the first time in my life it's it, this is about the calmest that the water's been and tonight's going to be a peaceful night and everything's going to go just just perfectly it seems like that that i, I couldn't have picked a better time it's, everything is going so smooth and, well the water's like glass tonight and it's and I'm in the middle of the lake, and 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 uh, what could possibly go wrong? Go wrong? Go wrong? In the midst of a, in the midst of the way to to the miracle, 
on the way to a miracle. And an eruption shows up. And suddenly, I don't, I, I don't know that it was just a, a little breeze and then it picked up speed. I wonder if it wasn't just something... Because I know that whenever it's come on my life, normally it hasn't just kind of been one of those uh, little breeze and then, it, and then a little bit and I think maybe I ought to get off the water. I, I told you about probably my scariest experience on, uh, on, in my canoe. Amen. But uh, I remember being in, in uh, Bay City and we were fishing on a, on a lagoon type of a deal, backwaters. And it was about, oh, about a half, half a mile across and probably about a mile and a half long. And we were down the lake quite a bit. And uh, water was calm and everything was going along good and fish were biting. And it was a good bite. They were just, uh, we were having, we were having a good night. Uh, and it was going to be probably one of our best fishing trips. The bass were biting and the pike were biting. And we had quite a stringer. I don't recall exactly how many we had on there, but it was, it was a good fishing trip. It was going to be quickly a, a filled stringer, and we were going to be able to go home. And, and, and it was calm. Everything was perfect. And uh, Larissa wasn't crying. She was just a, kid, just a baby at the time, and she wasn't crying. It was perfect. And all of a sudden, I heard a noise, and I looked over, and on the top of a little hill, not, I mean, I'm not talking a mountain or anything, but just the little hill just out far enough that I could see, I don't know, probably a mile or two away, I could see the trees, and they were moving. And I told Amy, I said, and there was a little bit of a breeze that started on that thing, and I said, we're going, we're going back, to the, back to the shore, and she said, I don't see a need to go back. I said, I do. By the time I got that canoe turned around, those waves were kicking up. And before I could get paddled back to the shore, there were white caps on that lake. I was paddling for everything that I was worth because I had a little girl in the, in the boat, and my wife was in the boat, and I was in the boat, and I didn't want to lose that. We always wore our life vests. But I knew that it'd be a while before somebody came to look for us, and I thought, I, I, I need to get off this water. I've got to get off. And it, it was just that quick. Boom. It, I mean, literally within, within 15 minutes, it went from a calm to white caps. It was so fast. And that's the kind of a deal that it was on the night that the disciples were heading across to watch Jesus work the miracle for a man of Gadara. One moment it was calm, and the next minute everything had turned upside down. It was that interruption that, that God could show his glory in a way that perhaps had never and could never be uh, seen any other time. Some of the greatest messages that we hear about that storm that God calmed. And, uh, and sometimes there is a distinction of a storm and then the man of the legion of devils. Oh, this was one miracle. Oh, this is another miracle. But really what was happening was is that God was leading them into a place where, where they could see the great miracle that he was getting ready to perform for the man. A miracle for nature was nothing in the hands of God. It was just, an, oh, well, I created it. I can stop it. So when they called out, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Amen. He said, uh, so you having little problems? Scared? Your sea leg's gone? And, uh, and he stepped to the bow of the boat and said, hey, you're scaring my kids. Peace be still. And immediately the first interruption was stopped. And with its stop was a miracle that, that uh, has seldom been uh, duplicated throughout history. I don't know of very many times whenever I've been able to hear, even in this day, of a time when nature has changed its course 
just because somebody was on their way to a miracle. Now, I do know, I remember one time they said, I think it was Brother Billy Cole that was preaching in Thailand, and, and uh, there was a, I believe it was Thailand. Anyway, he was, he was preaching, and it was going to be uh, during the monsoon season, whenever rains and stuff were coming. And, uh, and they had a tent that was there, and he said, uh, he told the people, he said, we will pray because the rain was coming so bad. And he said, we will pray, and God will stop the rain until this is over. And he said, for the time that they were there, for whatever length of time that that was, there was no rain. Now, I know that God can do that, but I haven't seen it every day. I don't, don't hear of that that often. I know that he still can, and I know that he still will. But that, but that message that we read here tonight was on the way to a miracle. And then you have that man with the legion of devils. And I, and I, uh, and and we could deal with that for a while, but just for the space of, just for the space of thinking about it, he was a man just like you and I. He was a man that uh, I believe had grown up in a, in a in at least a decent family, and uh, I don't think he really wanted to be bound by the devils. Something had happened. I don't know if it was an entertaining of the evil spirits, and all of a sudden they overcame him, or what. But somehow a legion of devils had had found a dwelling place, and they came and dwelt on the inside of that. Tormented day and night, never any rest. And uh, one man said they were suicide devils because all that he did all the time was take rocks and try to cut himself with the rocks. And uh, he cried. It was an eerie cry to hear in the mountains at night. And uh, I wonder if maybe there was jokes that were that uh, that somebody would tell about it he he bore the brunt of the shame that was that was attached guilt was there but it was a miracle that was getting ready to happen and Jesus saw the man that was tormented by a legion of devils and said I think it's time that we do the work that we came for get out of him and in one moment of time I, 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 I pass it through and when they found the man they found him clothed and sitting at the feet of Jesus and in his right mind it was that quick and, and the miracle took place and, and, uh, and, I, and, and Jesus finished the miracle and, and the people started coming so I'm guessing that probably we're talking a couple of hours that he was on the shore talking to this man that had the legion of devils of it now was free and uh, and communicating him for a, a few hours at the most and then Jesus the people said uh, of the of the villages around please leave our community and he said okay the man with the legion of devils said could could I go with you and he said no I want you to go and tell what good things that God has done for you and he he headed out and he began on his way rejoicing and telling what God had done and uh, and Jesus got to the other side and there met him a man a religious ruler Jairus by name he was a desperate man because he had just found out that his daughter was, who had been sick for some time was in the closing hours of her life. And so it was desperation that needed a miracle. And I somehow see this man running to Jesus and falling on his face. And, and I don't know if we could ever picture it all the way, but a man that has only one child and, and that child is loved by the mom and dad, we could never really comprehend fully of what of the attitude of what that man was thinking. I'm not worried about what anybody thinks right now. I, I, I just got to get a hold of this one Jesus because if there's anybody that can perform a miracle, it's Jesus. And, and if there's anything that can be done, it's through him. 
and, and he's running with desperation, knowing that time is not on his side. He's, uh, he doesn't have much time, and if, if something isn't done quickly, all hope is gone, and, and all of his dreams are shattered in just a moment of time. And, uh, and he falls on his face, and the crowd has made way, and they're standing back watching what's going to happen, and Jesus forgot the, uh, forgot the messages that he was speaking at the time and said, I'll be happy to go with you, and he'll, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, and he's busy in the middle of his crying, and he's rejoicing because Jesus is coming. Now, Jesus wasn't going the speed that, the, that Jairus would have wanted him to go, but he was going at a pretty good clip. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, and we're on our way, and Jairus is saying, my miracle is on its way. It's, not, it's going to be here in just a few moments. It won't be long now, and I'm going to get my miracle, and, and, uh, and I know what Jesus is going to do. He's going to He's going to reach down to my daughter, and he's going to, and he's going to heal my daughter. And, uh, and on the way to a miracle, an interruption shows up. I'd like to interrupt this, this miracle for a miracle. I'd like to interrupt this time. Hallelujah. And while Jairus is wringing his hands, while Jairus is, is saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. You've got to hurry. You've got to hurry. Jesus turned to a woman and said, Who touched me? And when I read what she had gone through, Mark is perhaps the least kind. Luke said she spent all that she had. But Mark said, no, I'm going to tell it the way that it is. She suffered at the hands of many physicians. She went to the experimental hospital. And they tried every type of uh, experiment that they could. And every experiment that they did on her, she suffered at the hands of many physicians. The only reason that she kept going to the physicians is because nobody could give her hope. And nobody could change her life. And every time that some new quack would come to town, she'd be the first one in line. Do you think you can help a woman with an issue of blood? I'm desperate. I need help. I don't know where else to go. I've tried everything else. And he would say, yes, I, I think I can help you. Money on the line, please. And she spent all that she had and suffered at the hands of many physicians. Going home from this, from this well, it'll be better this time. It's surely going to be better this time. Surely this one will help me out. And this is going to be the miracle that I'm really looking for. Oh, if it would only work. I, I've been looking for this for so long. I've been desperate. It's been 12 years that I've been with this disease. And no one can help me. And I'm still in the midst of my suffering. And on the way to a miracle, an interruption stops one miracle for just a moment and another miracle begins to transpire. Who touched me, he said. And whenever she knew that she could not be hidden, I, I, I somehow wonder if maybe she didn't kind of try to fade into the crowd just a little bit. Hopefully nobody will see what I did. And, and he's in such a hurry getting to that other place where the miracle's going to be that he... He, he'll, he'll never know that I'm the one that did it. Virtue has flown. And for the first time in my life, I've heard in so long, I've got my miracle, and I'm so thankful for what God has done. And I and 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 Jerry says, "Come on, Master, it's it's going good." And he said, "Who touched me? Who touched me?" And I can see the desperate man that stands before him that is saying, who cares who touched you? 
uh, you know, come on. I've got a daughter at, at home, and, it's, and it isn't going to be too long. Man, people touch people every day, and it doesn't bother them. What, what? You're the only hope that I have. I need a miracle. I need, I need you to touch. Nobody else can do it. And you're worried about who touched you. And it was an interruption of the plans. But he was on his way to a miracle when an interruption showed up. And if we're going to talk about if we're going to talk about miracles, we'll talk about the woman with the issue of blood. Because it was a miracle, but really it was not intended to be a miracle as far as, as, far as Jairus was, was concerned. It was nothing but an interruption. And when Jesus, amen, and when Jesus stepped up, it turned around and said, Who touched me? And he stayed and lingered, she said. Hey, this one knows more than what uh, he's letting on. He's looking for a confession and he ain't stopping until he gets one. She could feel his eyes upon her and, and uh, when she knew that she could not be hid, she said, it was me. And he said, uh, I know you had a problem. And I knew that you were back there getting ready to interrupt. But it's okay. I passed by your way on my way to a miracle because I wanted to perform a miracle for you. Your interruption is not an interruption at all. It's just hesitating things for just a little bit. It's okay. You, you'll be all right. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And everybody's shaking their heads and going, wow, this, this is phenomenal. We just saw a great miracle. And Jerry's is saying, I didn't. The interruption's stopping me. I haven't seen what I want to see. And while they're busy celebrating what somebody a victory for somebody else, I haven't received my victory. I'm still in a desperate strait. My daughter is at the, at the closing moments before death. And, and right now, I really don't want anything to stand in the way. And whenever he saw the man coming from his house, he already knew what was going to be said before the words were out of the man's mouth. Why are you bothering the master anymore? Your little girl. I don't know if you could drive a knife hard enough into a man's heart to hear those words. And that interruption that perhaps those few moments of time, were they just outside the house? Where were they at? How close were they to the house? If he had not stopped, would it have been enough time? You know, I, I wonder if maybe there was that Oh, if, if, if we could have, if I could have had that extra five minutes, that interruption robbed me of my miracle. It took away everything from me. And, and, uh, and Jesus said, I'm still on my way to the What you think is done is not done. It's just started. No interruption is going to stop me from the miracle that I want to give you. No interruption is going to keep me from giving you the miracle that you need within your life. You might think that it's an interruption in your life, but I know exactly where I'm going and I know exactly at what time I want to get there. And when I arrive on the scene, I want there to be those that are grieving. I want there to be those that have doubt. 
because I want to show how powerful that I am today. I'm here to get some glory. I'm here to show you my power. I'm here to show you that I can still work a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he stepped onto the porch of that man's house, amen, everybody's crying, everybody's, uh, and everybody's in grief, and he says, why are you crying? She's not dead. She's just asleep. And everybody had been in there and saw that lifeless form. Amen. And they all began to laugh and mock. And Jesus said, if you guys can move on out, I've got, I've got business to take care of. And he walked into the room of that little girl. Amen. And he took her by the hand. And in a moment of time, amen, the miracle began to be performed. And a, and a little girl that was 12 years old came back to life. And everybody was amazed. But a few moments ago, there was the interruption that seemed to stop the miracle. It's interruptions that come in life that sometimes we wonder why, why things happen the way that they do. Why would God do this to me? Why do I have to face the things that I'm facing? It's, it seems like it's nothing but an interruption. Why, the Apostle Paul, whenever he thought that he was in the will of God, was in the midst of hurrying to another place to persecute. And in the midst of his, in the midst of his trying to be in the will of God, there was an interruption that stopped him and changed his course. And from that time on, that's whenever he was really known as the Apostle Paul. He interrupted things so that there could be the change. I, and, and I, I've mentioned this before, but... Uh, but in the book of Acts, there is a storm that, that, uh, that the Apostle Paul went through. And in the midst of that storm, they, they was, there was a shipwreck where the ship totally, totally was wrecked and everybody's life was saved in a little island called Miletus. And, and, and there's only one reason that I could see for them ever to get, and they went through uh, all kinds of horrible stuff in that storm. They thought that they, there was a ship that was lost. There was, there, all the cargo was lost. The ship was ruined. And, and, uh, but there was a little island that were filled with barbarian people that had never known the love of Jesus Christ and perhaps would never be able to come in contact had there not been a storm that showed up and turned a boat upside down. And, and, and God caused there to be an interruption in the Apostle Paul, Paul said, I'm heading to Italy. I'm heading, heading down the path so that I can get to the place where I can preach to the church in Rome. Amen. And, uh, and, and on his way to Rome, there's a little interruption. Amen. And for a time, he spends, he spends a few nights in a place called Miletus. And in that little, in, on that little island, amen, miracles begin to happen. And God's word begins to be performed. Only God knows how many people were saved simply because there became an interruption in Paul's life. Paul, if you would have, if you would have talked to him, he would have told before the storm, he would have told you, it's not the will of God that I go in this, in, in, in this boat right now. It's the will of God that I stay right here and wait until the season is right to get on the boat and then go across the sea. The seas aren't right. As a matter of fact, he told the captain in the middle of the storm, you should have listened to me. We'd still be at home, and we wouldn't be in the storm that we're in right now. But I somehow wonder if maybe that storm wasn't the hand of God that was saying, Paul, I've got a job for you to do, and if, if everything is calm, you'll just spend the time that you have in a place that already knows about me, and you won't have the interruption that I need you to have I'm going to stop you in your tracks because there needs to be a divine interruption. I'm going to show you my power one more time. And, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm speaking what the Lord has given. And I know it's, it, uh, it may not be a, uh, the longest, and I'm, and I'm trying to wrap it on up right now. 
But I would say that God has, has taken us, and there are times whenever there's a miracle that's, that's on the horizon. And if we can understand that the interruptions that we have whenever God steps us away from the crowd and steps us away from things, and we say, why, did this, why is this happening in my life? And why does this seem to come to place right now? It, 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 the timing is off. It doesn't seem to be right that I should have to face this right now. This is not the way that I would have planned it. And perhaps we ought to look back and understand that maybe this is an interruption from God. And God has something in store for us in the midst of an interruption. The miracle will still come, hallelujah, but in the interruption there will be a miracle that's on the way to another miracle. They were on their way to the temple at the hour of prayer. They were on their way to pray when an interruption showed up. You got any money for me, man? No, we're broke. And being the beggar that he was, the lame man continued to call. Alms? You got any alms? Can somebody help me? I'm on my way to prayer. I really don't have time for this right now. Alms? Alms? And a divine interruption turned into a divine revival where 5,000 souls are added to the church. I'm heading to prayer. I don't have time for this right now. And God said, oh, you have plenty of time. Remember the storm. And God has some things that he's going to interrupt our lives. And I think sometimes if we would just be sensitive enough to say, okay, this is a God moment. And in the midst of this interruption, God has something great for me. Oh, God, I thank you for what you have done. I pray, oh, God, that we would take your interruptions and that we would understand that there are things that you want to do for us. And sometimes it's not according to our will and it's not according to our timing. But whenever you're interrupting, it's for a purpose, it's for a plan. And, God, I pray that we would be able to be, hallelujah, sensitive to the fact that you that you can touch us in the midst of an interruption. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. God, whatever storm would come, whatever thing would come that looks like it's not a part of the plan, pray, God, that we would accept your will and your purpose and be able to say, yes, Lord, I know that you have worked all things for the good to them that love the Lord, called according to his purpose. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. I said if you have an offering to give, i got to go out to the car and get my checkbook to give mine. But if you have an offering to give, that would be, uh, we, you're dismissed in Jesus' name. It's always been good, you know.